practice and training camp, what specifically do you look for when you review that video? Yeah, Pete, I'd say, uh, I mean, tomorrow's actually going to be our first uh, film day. So glad you're, you're asking that. It's going to get my mind thinking about exactly what we want to uh, target when we watch the film. Um, but number one thing is our habits. Um, you know, all the things that have been our standard last year, you know, just reinforcing that. Uh, finding ways to, you know, uh, get better in, you know, plays that didn't, you know, uh, live up to that standard and also identify the ones that were great. Um, but then we have some new habits. You know, uh, yesterday I talked about our new offensive habits and how we're running and spacing the floor a little bit differently. Um, the core of our defense right now, for the most part, is still the same. We're just kind of reemphasizing uh, some areas of weakness um, as we studied last season. And then when it gets into kind of more specific uh, execution, plays, um, we'll have that as well. So I would say early stages of camp, it, it's definitely weighted heavily more towards uh, our habits um, and kind of the mentality of any given possession, doesn't matter what we're running or what we're facing, are our core habits the same? Um, you know, defensively and offensively, are we sharing the ball on offense? Are we spacing the right way? Um, are we competing and, and rotating the way we need to be defensively? And then as we unfold into camp and start playing games, and we have some more targeted schemes or we're emphasizing certain plays a little bit more, the execution comes into play. Uh, but it's definitely a, a big bucket to pull from. But I definitely think tomorrow is going to be more about our habits and making sure we're reinforcing what we did well last year, uh, what we've been reemphasizing this year, um, and then what's the new stuff as well. Harrington? <clears throat> and I'll uh, mute there. Um, Taylor, um, so percentage-wise, John ja Morant's three-point shooting was probably a little better than most people maybe expected last season. In terms of increasing his volume without a decline in efficiency, is there anything you, specific you and the coaches are emphasizing with him? Hey, Chris, I, you know, you can definitely get the percentages, and I think he actually shot, you know, just over 40%. I think it was like maybe 42 on catch-and-shoot threes, and – um, you know, low thirties, um, you know, off the bounce. So it's kind of a combination of, you know, situations that we're definitely emphasizing with him. Um, we're not trying to throw a, a specific, nu specific number necessarily on, you've got to shoot this many threes. I think it's kind of identifying more opportunities to get off threes. Uh, he's such an unselfish guy, uh, loves getting his teammates involved. Um, and you can definitely look at the sheer volume and say, Hey, if only you could get so many more, you know, what that would add to your efficiency. And, we, we all know, you know, the, the number one thing for him is to attack, you know, and get a piece of the paint, whether it's for himself or opening something up for a teammate. Uh, but there's definitely those uh, incremental ads, um, you know, in the shot totals, you know, from the three point line. So, you know, is it as simple as adding one a quarter? You know, we'll, we'll see. You know, we just really want him to embrace the right situations to attack, right situations to shoot, study a little bit more, build confidence in his ability um, to shoot on catch and shoot situations. And then recognizing, obviously, a, a full rookie season of knowing how teams are going to guard him. You know, what are those shots off the bounce going to look like? Whether it's a pick and roll based one, it's an ISO, you know, in a, in a ISO situation. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on with him, just kind of slowly getting his mind wrapped around situation based uh, decisions and then kind of looking at the numbers and, and you know, putting the work. I mean, Ja has gone above and beyond this, this summer working on his shot. Um, you know, nothing's going to change overnight in just one off season. You know, there's going to be more that he's going to pour into his overall game, especially with his shot development. Uh, but he, he spent a really good amount of time over the summer working on the shot. We know he's going to take big steps this year. The numbers will be the numbers. But he's just making the right decisions, trusting the work behind it. They go to hand in hand. Then we're going to get the right numbers um, at the end of the day. Teresa. Yeah, Taylor, and following up on that, what other areas of, of Jaws' game would you like to see him try to work on this year, uh, you know, to build off of his rookie year? Uh, well, I hope he's listening to this one, uh, Teresa, and I think he would love to hear this. It's just every, every part of his game. I think that's how he's built. Um, he's focused on identifying every part of his game on the floor, off the court. How can he be a better decision maker, shooter, uh, leader on the offensive end, how can he be the leader of our defensive unit and be in the first line of attack? How can he be a better pick and roll defender, activity, rebounder to start our break? It's holistic. Um, and I think he embraces that challenge. That's how he's built. And then the stuff off the court, continuing to be one of the leaders of this team. He learned so much in his rookie year, um, just organically. 
Um, and, you know, obviously he leads by example and, and he's, you know, really started to find his voice over this past year. We talked about that a lot last year, um, you know, how he's just, you know, getting more comfortable understanding, you know, what he's got to do and now what his teammates need to do as well. Um, so I think it's kind of everything, you know, him working on his body and his diet, his nutrition. Um, he came in day one with that mentality and really jumped, uh, jumped on it. And that's why he had such a great first year. And the same is going to be said for what he did this past summer, as unique as it was and as challenging as it was, um, you know, that's how he's built to, to approach every single day. So my, my simple uh, answer would be everything. Time for two more. We'll go to Peter and then Brevin. Peter. Hey, Taylor, at what point in the process do you start looking at full rotations? Are you looking at twos, threes, fives at this point? And will we start to see that as early as this weekend? Yeah, Pierre, I'd say, um, you know, it's going to be uh, great, you know, the, the new kind of schedule format that the NBA is uh, implementing this year, you know, playing in the same market against the same team twice. Um, so, you know, we'll have the opportunity to, to tackle our first preseason game on Saturday. Obviously, be smart about how many minutes everyone's playing, uh, which I think will allow us to kind of really dive into our depth and, and create different lineups and combinations and create opportunities for guys to compete for spots. Um, you know, throughout the, throughout the roster, the depth chart. And then, you know, you get to run it back two days later against the same team, um, you know, and, and, you know, see what we were able to accomplish in the first game and, and create more opportunities there. So just being in the same city in, in kind of a strange way is going to kind of put us in a position, I think, um, to, to, to accomplish that. So I would say this first week, we're going to dive into that depth uh, a lot. And then obviously, as we near the end of our preseason schedule with two against Atlanta and, and then just only a few days after that, you know, start our season against San Antonio. Uh, hopefully we've got some more firm decisions on what those lines could look like. Um, but you know, I, I think there's going to be a lot of open competition with the depth that we have. And um, so uh, that's kind of look. But, you know, that's going to be our focus the first two uh, games for sure. <clears throat> and the last question, Brevin. Coach, how you doing? Um... Good, Brevin. Uh, talking about to John Morantz uh, with his game, most times for him, of course, the threes will come, but a lot of his shots, uh, especially in pick and roll situations, a lot of teams go under. Uh, have, have you talked much about him and now also more working more so with the mid range, not just worrying about stepping down behind the line? Because as you say, a lot of off the dribble, those things come more in the mid range. And then just as two part other thing, Grayson Allen, what he, what he really took a step forward in the bubble. Uh, moving forward, how, how do you see uh, with his role? Sure. Um, you know, Brevin, I'd say when it comes to jaw and the reads off of the pick and roll, you know, obviously teams are game planning and, and trying to go under and take away his elite ability to get in the paint. Um, but I think, you know, he plays at such a, a, a great pace and attacking mentality. That's what makes him so good getting the paint. I think he and the coaches have really worked, um, you know, over the last couple of months, on making that read earlier. So we're trying to stay away from the mid range. I mean, he's got an elite floater and we want him to excel in that and, you know, become an elite finisher as well. Uh, but really trying to, you know, the, the you know, the, the analytics and the efficiencies and whatnot um, is rather than shooting a long two versus an under, let's try to pre-identify that, whether it's an early under, uh, it's a late under and still being attacking downhill, but he's got the great ability with his sixth sense to kind of read situations sometimes before they even happen. Um, is it, to make that a three-point shot and, um, you know, trying to stay, stay away from the mid-range pull. Naturally, it's going to happen at times, but hopefully to simplify his game plan, it's downhill to the rim, downhill floater, um, or we're shooting threes. And then as for Grayson, you know, I think he found a lot of success in the bubble because he really invested in his body. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the challenge put in front of him to, to come back from an injury, I think he's really strengthened his body a lot. It's credit to him, credit to our performance team to kind of, you know, uh, execute that plan. And that allowed him to endure, you know, a huge role for us, um, you know, and uh, going through that process of getting healthy, he kind of identified his role in the team, you know, where he could be successful. Um, you know, obviously he shot the ball great in the bubble, he spent a lot of time, you know, once we got out of the bubble and, and we were in these voluntary workouts, you know, continuing to work on his body, continuing to, you know, go at a, a higher pace to get threes off, knowing that he had success, how he could replicate that again. And then defensively, you know, strengthen his body, strengthen his agility uh, to become a really good one-on-one -on -one defender, taking steps in that area. And we know he's the ultimate competitor, you know, ultimate team guy, competitor, um, but uh, really identifying his role, something I would say he kind of got a really good taste of in the bubble. 
And hopefully as we start off this season, he continues to take that work and apply it to the role that he'll have um, you know, at the beginning of the season this year. All right, Coach. Thanks for your time today. Great. Thanks, everyone. Take care.